Okay, so DeepSeek has been making waves and that has led to a lot of misinformation, noise, and hype. So today, we are going to bust the top 10 myths surrounding DeepSeek and go through the actual implications for everyday AI users. A massive shout out to Ben Thompson for his DeepSeek deep dive. Ah. Uh -huh. Uh, he wrote a very comprehensive article that helped me distill this YouTube video. And if you didn't get that second joke, uh, this video is definitely for you. Let's get started. All right, myth number one, DeepSeek built their model for just $5.6 million. Uh, that's very inaccurate because the 5.6 million only covers the final training run and excludes critical costs like infrastructure. For example, they reportedly have 50,000 Hopper GPUs from NVIDIA and that's worth around a billion dollars, showing their true investment scale is much larger. The analogy I would use is saying DeepSeek built their model for 5.6 million is like saying the latest iPhone only costs $500 to manufacture. Uh, while that might be the final assembly cost, uh, it doesn't include other cost contributors like research and development to name just one. Myth number two, they must have broken the rules to do this. So funnily enough, the main reason DeepSeek is getting so much attention is because of how they innovated within the constraints of the export controls. So what that means is because they had to use the less powerful H800 GPUs, they had to come up with creative ways to optimize their model architecture. And most analysts agree that had DeepSeek been able to use the more powerful H100s, uh, they would have done things differently and potentially have come up with an even more powerful model. There is some confusion around this, so I made this very oversimplified table. The H100s are more powerful and they um, they were not allowed to be sold to Chinese companies. H800s are the nerfed versions of the H100s and was allowed. And because both H100 and H800s are classified as Hopper generation GPUs, uh, DeepSeek having 50,000 Hopper GPUs makes sense. And the analogy I would give here is um, like how Samsung legally uses slightly slower processors in some regions due to licensing agreements. Uh, they didn't break any rules. They just optimize their design around the constraints. Myth number three, DeepSeek has beaten OpenAI. First, there is a huge difference between optimizing for performance and optimizing for efficiency. It's like we can spend two hours at the gym to maximize muscle gain aka optimize for performance, or we can spend 45 minutes to achieve 80% of those gains, aka optimizing for efficiency. So while DeepSeek's reasoning model R1 matches OpenAI's reasoning model O1 in performance, uh, OpenAI has already demonstrated O3, which is more powerful than O1 and R1. So the oversimplified answer here is that DeepSeek leads in efficiency but not overall capability. And as a testament to how fast the AI industry is moving, OpenAI just released O3 Mini and made it available for free users. Uh, and we can even use O3 Mini with search. And arguably this might not have happened without the pressure brought on by DeepSeek. The analogy here is if you had a lot of money, you could pay a thousand or two thousand dollars for the latest flagship iPhone, right? But let's say a Chinese company comes along and produces a smartphone that gives you 90% of the flagship performance for a fraction of the cost, $200. Not that that has ever happened. Um, and although that $200 smartphone might be extremely popular, it would not be true to say the more cost-effective smartphone beats the iPhone in overall capability. Myth number four, DeepSeek's models are directly comparable to all other AI models. Not really, we need to make apple to apple comparisons. What that means is, I made this super fancy table um, to better explain um, the differences. So for DeepSeek, their base model is V3, and that's comparable to ChatGPT's 4.0. DeepSeek's reasoning model is R1. And what's crazy about that is, we were actually able to use search along with the R1 reasoning model. Because up until now, ChatGPT's equivalent O1 did not have that additional search function. However, as of the making of this video, ChatGPT released O3 Mini, and we can use search with this new reasoning model. Forgive me for the silly analogy here, but it's like comparing a sports car to an SUV. Um, they're both vehicles, but you buy them for completely different reasons. Uh, you buy one of them uh, when you're facing a midlife crisis and you buy the other when you're trying to overcompensate for something. I'll let you decide which one's which. 
But the takeaway here is we need to make apple to apple comparisons and not apple to oranges. Myth number five, DeepSeek R1's visible chain of thought is a technical breakthrough. Uh, just to make sure we're all on the same page, uh, when using DeepSeek R1, we can see the chain of thought, the thinking process. Uh, whereas previously we couldn't with ChatGPT 01. But the fact that we can see R1's reasoning process is actually just a UI choice and not a technical innovation. Meaning uh, both R1 and OpenAI's O1 have similar reasoning capabilities. The key difference being that DeepSeek chooses to show us, the users, uh, the model's thinking process. And although this transparency has proven very popular with users, it's related to the presentation and not the capability. It's like two chefs making the exact same dish one in a closed kitchen and one at a demonstration counter. The process and result are the same, but watching the chef work adds to the experience. Myth number six, DeepSeek built everything from scratch. I can finally explain the joke from earlier. So DeepSeek allegedly used a process called model distillation. And I say allegedly because this is very hard to prove. Uh, we're not gonna dive into the technical details here, but basically distillation means DeepSeek took ChatGPT's outputs and trained their models on those outputs. Um, it's not illegal, a lot of AI companies are doing it, but it clearly breaks open AI's terms of service. Um, here's a bit of trivia I found interesting. Although Microsoft and OpenAI are investigating DeepSeek right now, Microsoft in the meantime has already added R1 to its uh, cloud offerings. Uh, I just find that pretty funny. The analogy here is if a phone manufacturer wanted to replicate the exact way the iPhone processes its images, instead of copying or stealing the code, they could just analyze thousands or millions of iPhone photos to teach their own system how to you know, match that style and quality. Myth number seven, using DeepSeek is automatically unsafe. It really depends how you define unsafe. Um, if you use the native DeepSeek app, either through web or mobile, your data is sent to and stored in China. If that's not cool with you, there are two workarounds. First, you can use platforms like Perplexity or Venice AI to access DeepSeek's models while keeping data in the US. Pick your poison. Um, I should also note that in the upcoming days, weeks, months, uh, we can expect more and more platforms to add DeepSeek models as an option. For example, Cursor just added it today. And the reason they're all doing this is because DeepSeek's models are extremely cheap. If you want to be fully private, you can run DeepSeek's models locally on your desktop or laptop through applications like Olama or LM Studio. Myth number eight, this kills NVIDIA's business. Not really. A lot of tech analysts and the CEO of Microsoft believe in Javon's paradox, uh, which in this context says that more efficient AI like DeepSeek is likely to increase overall demand for AI solutions. Basically, as the cost for something decreases, usage increases. So in the long run, there might be even more demand for NVIDIA's chips. Um, it's like when we got cheaper smartphones, right? It actually increased demand for premium phone processors like Qualcomm chips because more people entered the market. Myth nine, this is terrible for US tech companies. So unfortunately or fortunately, depending on how you feel about these companies, this is actually a huge win for some of them. Um, in the long run. For example, Amazon, they've always struggled to build their own models. Um, OpenAI has ChatGPT, Google has Gemini, Anthropic has Claude, Meta has Llama, right? Amazon doesn't have a leading model. But now it doesn't matter as much because they can serve these high quality open source models like DeepSeeks at lower costs for their customers. For Apple, they can leverage their Apple Silicon chip advantages for something um, called edge inference. I'll explain this in a bit. Uh, Meta is arguably the biggest winner of them all because every aspect of Meta's business, uh, for example, their advertising business, benefits from AI and cheaper inference means they can monetize their products more effectively. Uh, for those of you who don't know what inference means, basically it's when AI takes what it learned in the training phase and applies it to a new, situ new situation. For example, when we study, we study on textbooks, right? We train ourselves on textbooks and we apply what we learn to the test questions in front of us that we've never seen before. That's inference. Um, and this is my favorite analogy by far, just as cheaper smartphones and cheap internet and faster internet speeds uh, enabled companies like Uber and Instagram to exist in the first place, cheaper AI could enable new products and services. And US tech companies, for better or for worse, are in the best position to capitalize on this opportunity. Myth 10, this is China's Sputnik moment in AI. So Sputnik was a moment in history where the USSR demonstrated capabilities that the US 
US back then actually did not have. And obviously the USSR kept their methods a secret. But if we take a look at what uh, Deep, Deep Seek has accomplished, they published their methods openly. Um, they achieved effic efficiency improvements that were already expected. They demonstrated innovation within existing technological frameworks. So instead of comparing this moment to Sputnik, uh, a lot of industry experts say it's much closer to Google's 2004 moment when they publicly showed how to build more efficient infrastructure. So back then, Google didn't have to do this, but they showed everyone you didn't need expensive mainframes to build a supercomputer cluster. And here, DeepSeek is showing us we don't necessarily need the most powerful chips to achieve competitive results. All right, moving on to what this actually means for all of us. Number one, we can now get access to advanced AI features without paying. So for users who have not paid for any AI tool, they now have access to two powerful reasoning models, DeepSeek's R1 and ChatGPT's O3 Mini. Um, and as a reminder, reasoning models are great at complex math problems, programming challenges, and step-by-step -step reasoning tasks. Implication number two, if privacy is a concern, protect your data. I touched on this earlier, but if you are concerned about how DeepSeek handles your data, you have two options. Number one, instead of using the native web and mobile apps, you can use Perplexity, Venice AI, Cursor, and other platforms uh, that will for sure start integrating DeepSeek into their offerings. Or number two, if you don't want your data stored anywhere, uh, except locally, of course, you can run DeepSeek's models through LM Studio or Olama. The caveat here is you probably can't run the more powerful models since you'll be hardware constrained. Implication number three, make smart choices about switching. So I'm gonna apologize in advance for ranting a little bit here, but we should not switch or change the way we do things just because something is trending. Like, for example, let's say you're using the Todoist app for task management, okay? And someone tells you, hey, you should switch to TickTick, another to-do app, because they just announced this AI feature. Like, no, that's not how this works. You've invested time and effort to set up Todoist in a way that you like. So unless TickTick's AI feature makes a meaningful difference to your workflow, you're better off staying put and not paying the switching tax. It's also likely that Todoist will build that AI feature down the road. So yeah, only switch and use DeepSeek if it provides clear advantages for your specific needs. Uh, if you're a developer and you wanna minimize your costs, go for it. If you're an everyday user, you're, you already pay for ChatGPT and you care about where your data is stored, then no. To be clear, this has been an incredible achievement by the DeepSeek team. And although the implications for the US tech companies and stock market can be debated, there is no question that this has been a massive win for us, the users. Case in point, I genuinely don't think OpenAI would have made O3 Mini available for free had it not been for DeepSeek. That being said, I don't recommend jumping on the hype train without fully understanding the implications because new cycles like this one will happen again and again. I know this video is quite different from my usual videos, so let me know what you think. No fancy graphics, but hopefully the concepts were still somewhat clearly explained. See you in the next video in the meantime. Have a great one.